What's happening Facebook entrepreneurs? All right, today is part 2.0 of dope ass live streams. We're gonna be using um, Adobe Fire Fireworks. We're gonna be using Mozilla Firefox uh, to download a couple of assets off of YouTube. And we're gonna be using Wirecast to actually broadcast the live streams. Wirecast, there is a $500 version and a $1,000 version, which is the pro version. Um, which is what I'm currently using to live stream this broadcast. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that you need a decent computer, preferably with a solid state hard drive if you're going to be doing really high quality broadcasts, especially uh, 720p up to uh, Facebook along with 720 or 1080p recording directly to your desktop, including video content and transparent graphics that you might wanna overlay inside of uh, the streams so I'm gonna walk you through my entire process of creating dope ass live streams like this one of course I'm using some custom uh, equipment I've got a custom built computer a few of them actually and um, I'm using some external software like an external audio interface the uh, Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 with an MXL 990 microphone which is what you are listening to me through right now um, and my computer is a custom built computer um, I would put a price on it but including like software and hardware it is well over 10 maybe even $15,000 you don't necessarily need all the hardware and software that I'm using in order to just do a live stream you can get away with something two thousand twenty five hundred dollar computer is definitely worth the investment on top of the one thousand you spend on Wirecast and you can use these live streams to build up your authority your influence inside of the uh, digital atmosphere and eventually make your money back by providing different services maybe doing podcasts or interviews over time this is going to give you some passive audience uh building tools and you know maybe even some passive income which is also what i have used to build now i also use wirecast to record some of my um, videos that i do on youtube and to put together some of the videos that i actually just want to have for um you know maybe webinars or whatever i'll record them live and then i'll go back and save the hd version that i recorded on my desktop in youtube or wherever i want to upload it facebook so that people can go back and watch those and um, having these live videos it's a really awesome way to actually put together media content uh, via live streams on Facebook, whether it be YouTube or whatever it is you want to use, Periscope and Twitter, Twitch, um, even for like video games. But I want to go ahead and kind of walk you guys through my entire creation process. I'm going to build a live stream from scratch and I'm going to do some pretty cool um, editing things that some people may have never thought of doing to kind of make the live stream stand out. So I'm just gonna show you guys some of my th thought processes for building out these live streams, what tools I use and how I go about designing all the assets. Right now I've got maybe five individual layers. You see this layer that says dope ass live streams 2.0 using blah, blah, blah um, with Memphis Entrepreneur Club in the top right hand corner on top of a dark, like a transparent black background. That's one whole layer. I can turn that layer off and you're gonna see a video. All right, so this video is its own layer underneath my dope ass live streams title shot, right? I call this a shot. The title shot and then the video shot. I turn both of those shots off and then you have my desktop which is always on the very bottom shot. The desktop shot also hosts my audio um, for from my microphone. So the desktop and microphone are always on unless I want the mic off, then I'll turn the desktop shot off as well. And above the desktop shot, I have a music shot, which you hear music playing underneath my voice. So um, right now I'm using one, two, three, four different shots. I can even go in here and bring in something like, let's see if this works. Let me cut this off. Uh, my phone, for example, everything is going to look a little bit strange because I need to go back and change some of the settings for this. Let me see if I can do this in real time right now. Scale. Uh, this is a little funky looking. Let's see if I can reset. Scale to fit. Reset. Stretch to fit, maybe? No. So, I think I want to.
there we go that's more like it put it in full screen and boom there it is so i like how that looks we can use something like this to um you know maybe show our phone i can go in here you know type out some messages uh yo you know maybe put a, a big smiley face or something and i can show you guys like how awesome these streams are let me let me just do like a All right, so a lot of cool things that I can do right here using these live streams, using this live stream software, Telestream Wirecast, and a couple of other softwares that I use to actually display some of this stuff. And I'm actually using a iOS 11.2 or, or 2.0 or something like that. The newest version of iOS with some pretty cool other features that you guys might be interested in checking out too. Um, so let me go ahead and close all of this stuff out and get started on a custom live stream that I'm going to do for you guys. So first, Telestream Wirecast. Go to www. I think it's wirecast.com or telestream.net. I think it's telestream.net. Let's just go ahead and look at this right now and see which one it is. So first I'm going to open up a new tab. Telestream.net is what it is. We're gonna go over to products and we'll go down to Wirecast and buy. Uh, from here you have a couple of options. The Wirecast Studio 7 for $4.95. Wirecast Pro 7, which is what I'm using for $9.95. It's definitely worth the investment. If you have the money, you know, don't go and buy some random stuff. If you are trying to grow your audience online, go and get this program as soon as possible. Make the investment. You won't regret it. Start doing some really cool live streams. You obviously have to have a decent computer to be able to handle it. So go and make sure you look at the uh, specs, I think it is, um, or like the system requirements. They're going to be somewhere on this page, and I think it's under specs. Wirecast, Wirecast operating system, blah, 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 internet connectivity, um, CPU, uh, processor, RAM, all that good stuff. Go and check out the specs. Make sure your computer is compatible with it. If you're planning on getting a new computer anyway, go and get a computer not from Walmart or Best Buy, but a custom built computer from a configura configurator website where you can have some uh, really high end components that can handle everything that you throw at it. Um, if you are a music producer, if you are a influencer a public figure or graphic designer artist musician whatever it is that you do using telestream wirecast is a great way to broadcast some of your skills um, if you do interviews and podcasts this is another great way this is an incredible tool for you to use you don't need a crazy twenty thousand dollar computer um you know a crazy computer like i have to do these broadcasts but the better computer you have the easier it will be for you to do broadcasts and i also recommend that you use multiple monitors when you are doing these broadcasts so that you can have the telestream software on one monitor with your window or whatever other you know things that you might want to do at the same time on a different monitor or different screen all right so keep something like that in mind for when you get into broadcasting I'm going to go ahead and open a new window of Wirecast because I've already got one open right now. By default, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a preview window, which is black. You're going to see a live window, which is by default, it's gray. I'm going to go ahead and click on this arrow to push the preview window over to my live broadcast, even though we're not actually live. You see this red light shows that we're not live. The preview is live. So anything that I have up in my preview area, I can see. Anything that's in the preview area can be pushed over to the live stream, which is what the audience will see. You have your audio that's coming out of the live stream, which I usually turn that off so I don't hear that in my headphones. And then you have the audio that's coming in from your preview uh, mix, which I usually have this turned off as well. Um, and sometimes the, the audio is off by default. so. You know, I don't want to hear the music that I'm playing because I'm just trying to talk unless I'm queuing up some type of pre-recorded audio that I need to queue out at a specific time. So in the very far left hand side, you have your layers for each um, shot, right? So these are layers, but I call them shots. You have shot one, two, three, four, five, but you can layer these on top of each other just like the layers of a graphic design. <clears throat> 
or um, the layers inside of a video editing software so you can use some transparent layers right so if you have something that's going to be transparent is going to need to be at the top most layer anything under that will be seen under it etc if you go down so by default you have a shot layer here that you can go ahead and delete and um, at the very top right where it says wirecast pro you've got your live stream button you've got your record button where you record something directly to your desktop and then you've got this replay iso button. i don't really know what this third one does but it's not important we don't usually use it thank you chance i appreciate you for sharing this and this is going to be a live stream that i'm actually going to keep up um in case some of you other guys that are doing live streams or wanting to do live streams um want to know how this program works hopefully this will be a great resource for you so right now we have our preview and live uh shot shown i can change this to the preview only or the live only i prefer to have preview and live and then to have my layer editing windows open so for each layer or i would like to call them a shot um the very bottom shot is going to be the first shot that you add an asset to this could be your screen your desktop where you want to record content so i'm going to go in here right now click on this plus button and use a screen capture and we're going to capture a entire monitor we can choose to capture a window or a game assuming that we have the game running already like call of duty solitaire even or uh rocket league if that's your thing uh, but i prefer to keep this as window i have one two three four five different computer screens hooked up to my computer so technically i have five different windows i can choose uh, one of the three windows that I have active in the third window I like to have my wirecast software in the second window or the middle window I like to have my desktop and desktop background and any browsers that I might be using in the stream um, And in this case, this is my second window where you guys see my third window I'm actually using to manage the stream which is right here and For this preview, I'm gonna use my first window to actually show how to set up a live stream from the desktop so we're gonna call this desktop one we're gonna capture video we're gonna choose monitor because we're gonna use our first monitor we're gonna show the cursor and we're gonna do 25 frames a second since this is not a video we're not gonna capture system audio we're gonna select the window that we want to use so I'm gonna choose one full screen hit ok actually it's a different window so I think it's two okay all right there it is our window shows up here in this preview box we hit okay and boom our window is in the preview um pane all right so we've got the preview uh display and then we've got the live display right now if we were live we'd have a green box up here our audience would see a black screen if we wanted to push this desktop over to the live shot uh we make sure that we have smooth selected down here we have the option to change this to cut or uh, bow string cross dissolve cube any other dissolves we want to use i prefer to use smooth we're going to push this over to our live stream but we're not actually live so if i want to bring this back to a clear layer i can go back and select our default clear layer down here boom and we push that clear layer over to our live shot all right that's how the whole live thing works so right now we have our um desktop i could go in here and put a microphone input in here but i'm already using the microphone input right here so i don't want to cause any conflicts that could potentially crash or um, remove the mic input from you guys's stream so i'm just going to keep that uh empty for now and let's say we have this uh desktop shot at the very bottom right i want to start building on top of the desktop shot for uh, the purpose of my entire stream so here i might add um, on the next available shot or layer i'll add a audio file so maybe i want to have some music play in the background we're going to go in here and choose media file i'm going to go and browse on my computer let's say Memphis entrepreneur audio music instrumentals maybe even let's see let's see i'll give my hard drive a second to load since this is not a solid state drive that's why i recommend using solid straight solid state hard drives whenever possible because you won't have to wait for the standard cd style drive to boot up and spin up and to read the information so now i can go back and find 
you know, um, the track that I want to use. I have a total like one hour or 30 minute mix of music in this one audio file. I'm going to import that in here and I'm going to go over to the properties of this file. So first, let me just show you how these layers work. You've got one, two, three, four, five shot layers inside of your timeline or canvas or whatever you want to call this, where you have five individual layers inside of each layer, right? You've got, I just put the desktop in one layer and I put audio in another layer. Let's focus on the desktop layer. Inside of this desktop layer, I can add individual layers inside of this layer. So on the desktop shot, I can go and push this plus symbol under my shot layer properties to add another media file. And maybe I wanna have like, let's see, um, let's go browse on my computer projects throw away and i'll grab like a transparent image of some person right uh let's say maybe either it's going to be a person or let's do gary vaynerchuk let's find gary vaynerchuk where's gary v i want to find that one where he's wearing like red or something there he is cool looking gary v and i'm going to move this gary vaynerchuk over and i'm going to go over to the shot layers all right so we're in one layer on our timeline and inside of this layer i have two layers i have desktop on top of the desktop I have Gary V. So I'm going to select Gary V and I'm going to click on the um, shot layer properties. So we've got a shot here. All right. And inside of the shot, I have two layers. I'm going to select the layer that I want to edit the properties of. I'm going to click on the shot layer properties now to edit Gary Vaynerchuk. Right. I'm going to move Gary V over to the bottom right hand corner. Maybe he can be like our little logo or whatever. So I can scale him proportionately and then click and drag him to move him. And we're gonna have him in the bottom right hand corner just like that cool all right and uh, let's see i might want to do some cropping right if we had a logo or something we can crop the left of him we can crop the right of him i can crop the top and i can crop the bottom all right boom there he is so i'm gonna put him in the bottom right hand corner and there's our first shot with two layers in it boom desktop I can cut off the audio for the desktop shot since we don't have audio here anyway by clicking on this audio icon and graying it out. Alternatively, I can go click on the desktop layer and then click on the audio properties for this layer and turn that volume all the way down, right? So every layer has different properties. This PNG image does not have any audio properties. So if I click on audio, I can't do any editing to the audio because there is no audio track. Uh, there is no potential audio channel that I could insert into that layer because it's an image. And of course, I can move the images up and down and layer them differently, arrange the layers by clicking these arrows. So I might I might want to put Gary Vaynerchuk under my desktop. I click this arrow. Boom. He goes under the desktop. But for this, uh, I'm not going to do that. There we have it. Desktop and Gary V. Boom. They're live. So I'm going to bring that back and clear that layer. And now um, inside of this layer, I might want to go and add, you know, I can add another layer inside of here if I wanted to. So let's go add a media file. Let's browse for a media file. We're going to do something random. And let's say I'm going to bring in a random text. So let's say we have a logo in here, right? I'm going to bring in this random text or maybe a button. No, let's just do this random text. All right, so let's, let's say we have our logo up here. We wanna have our logo in the top right-hand corner. Of course, if we put this logo on this bottom layer, anything that we throw on these layers inside of our um, timeline or our shot layers, it's gonna overlay this logo. So, you know, assuming that we put this layer in here, this logo, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of trim it a bit. So I'm gonna trim the left, the right, the top, the bottom, so we can have more um, like better editing properties, I guess, if that makes sense. Or better, you know, it's easier for us to edit it. Now I can bring this over here and scale it to where I want it to be. And we can move it to the top right hand corner. That's where, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk's um, Ask Gary V Show logo sits uh, when you see him talking inside of his podcast or his, his live streams, right? So technically this shot is inside of my desktop shot which is not really what I want because I want other things to be under this logo so if I were to go and throw a video inside of our shot that's above our music shot let's go and find a video let's go to projects stock video loops and I'm just gonna find a random video 
and you see how you have a yellow line around this video that means there's like a tiny pixel of space in between the video and the outer edge so I want to change the size of this video from 100% to 101% so that we can hide that edge that border right so now that we have this video up here our logo disappeared and our game our Gary Vaynerchuk disappeared so what I'm gonna do now is grab our desktop shot I'm gonna right click and duplicate this shot right just duplicate it I'm gonna pull this desktop shot up to the very top above our video I'm gonna click on this desktop shot and go to the layer properties and delete the desktop out of this shot I'm gonna click on the minus button boom now we have Gary Vaynerchuk and our logo and then our video underneath it now I'm gonna go back to my original desktop shot and delete the Gary Vaynerchuk and the logo so now we should have a desktop shot a music shot a video shot and our logo and Gary V all right so I can go ahead and turn off Gary V for now and just keep our logo but let me just show you what this looks like if I were to push over our logo and our video into our live stream so now we have a cool looking video we have our logo up here which is on one individual layer I can turn the video off and only show my desktop which this is our preview window right I'm gonna push this over into our live stream and the video is just gonna fade out and it's gonna show our desktop under the logo all right so you can do a webcam here if you have a camera that you can hook up directly to your computer to broadcast the video footage directly into Wirecast then you could do that and have a shot of your video camera or webcam or iPhone even inside of this okay so uh, the next thing that I want to do is maybe have a cool intro um, or a title shot so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this uh, logo layer I'm gonna go ahead and delete our video layer I'm gonna go ahead and delete our audio layer all right and I'm gonna show you some properties for videos audio and that kind of stuff uh, here shortly but let me go into Adobe Fireworks and add a title shot now on Facebook live by default the biggest aspect ratio that you can design anything for is 720p but uh, maybe I want to record this to my desktop as well in 1080p maybe I want to do a live stream to twitch or YouTube all simultaneously in 1080p so I'm gonna design my assets in 1080p and when we import these into our live stream and go over to Facebook even though my assets and my video is in 1080p the live stream on Facebook will be 720p but no quality will be lost so I'm gonna click on file new or control in or command in if you're on a Mac and then we're gonna add 1920 by 1080 we're not gonna do 720 so 1920 by 1080 um, and this is our canvas we're gonna change the canvas from white to transparent so that we have a transparent background and now I'm gonna go in here and add some text so by default I'm gonna add a rectangle or square I'm gonna change the aspect ratio of this rectangle uh, to 1920 by 1080 and I'm gonna set that at zero by zero coordinates on my um, canvas so that it's sitting flush in the corner all right because this is a 1080 canvas and a 1080p um, layer or, or rectangle everything should shit <laughs> should shit should sit flush onto my canvas I'm gonna change the color of this to black and I'm going to change the transparency to 50 percent all right now I'm going to add text so let's say we want to do Arial bold we want this to be uh, italicized and I'll say uh, cool live stream right that can be my title I'll go and make sure that this text is centered align and then I'll center this using the align option to be centered to my canvas vertically and horizontally I'm gonna change the color to white and boom there we go we've got some cool text in here now I'm gonna change um, you know maybe set live stream to be black text and the cool text to be uh, regular right and maybe even remove the space from cool and live and then the space from live to stream um, and then change the size of stream even from black to regular all right so let's see what that looks like let's just do something weird cool live stream there you go there's our title shot uh, but I might want to change the color of, of the words cool or the word live to be red all right so cool live stream there we go now I'll go in here and like 
you know, add my logo. Let's go file open, or let's say we already have our logo design. I'll grab our logo and I'll paste it in the top right hand corner. And we can export one image to where our logo is just in here. Um, so that we can have our logo sitting on top of everything at all times. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll bring our logo in here. I'll kind of add a little bit of glow behind it to where it's not too apparent. And I'm going to save this as, I'm going to save this in right now, my throwaway folder. I'm just going to save this as logo. And we're going to make sure that we save this as a fireworks PNG so that we can go back and edit this later if we need to. I'm going to click on save. I'm going to hide that logo now and bring in um, our title shot and you know maybe add another line of text so i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to say presented by colon uh let's say corey owens and i'll add make sure corey owens is like you know a black text as well not bold but black i'm going to change the size of this text and then we're going to move this over to the bottom right hand corner of our main title shot right presented by Corey Owens. And let's say we want to change the color of this as well. Let's try to do red, see what that looks like. Red is a little too uh, weird. So let's try something else. That's kind of bright. Yellow? Yellow will work. All right, there we go. So presented by Corey Owens, cool. We've got our title shot right here. And I'm gonna save this Control shift s to save as a new document instead of saving it as a logo we're going to save this as title one and i'm going to save this in throwaway because i'm going to delete it later um, and i'm going to import this into our live um, into wirecast right so we save the logo and we just save the title shot that has a transparent black background so at the very top of my shot layer i want to add that logo here so i'm going to choose media file i'm going to browse for my throwaway folder I'm going to type logo and there's our logo and by default it's going to go ahead and, and, and set the aspect ratio of this imported asset to fit into my canvas at 720p and um, we don't have to worry about the edges of this where the yellow is because um, there is no graphic that can be cut off or seen on those edges because all we have in this graphic is a logo. If we move this around, um, there is no full screen um, graphic behind our logo. So we'll just keep this at the very top. Now underneath this, I'll go and add our title shot. So add a media file and we're gonna choose title. So let's find title, title one, open. And this actually does have a, a background. So as you can see, if I deselect that background, you kind of see that edge right there. Well, I want to have this set to um, 101 pixels. Or in this case, since this is designed in 1080p and my canvas is at 720p, I'm gonna set this from 67% to 68%. So one pixel higher. And now it's going to kind of stretch that beyond the edge of my canvas so that it doesn't appear to be a border around my live stream when you look at this on Facebook or YouTube or wherever you end up watching this later. So underneath this, now I'm gonna go and add a video shot. So I'm gonna go and add a media file. I'm gonna go and browse for a media file, stock video, video loops. And I'm going to show you in a second how you can download some loops or some videos to use inside of your live stream. So for the purpose of this, I might use, uh, let's find something kind of unique. I want to do this, this, uh, what do I want to do? I want to do something I haven't used before. Let's see if I can do this VJ loop. All right. Awesome. VJ loop. And as you can see, there's that yellow border again, because it's trying to flush the aspect ratio of this video against the border of my uh, canvas. So I'm gonna change that from 67%. And again, if you're doing a 1080p canvas, that would be 100%. You change it from 100 to 101. For the purpose of this, I'm changing this from 67 to 68. All right, now when I push this over into my quote unquote live stream, even though we're not live yet, this is what we're gonna see. All right, so we got cool live stream with the black background that we created in Adobe Fireworks like this right here. 
right? It's black with a 50% transparency and the whole canvas is transparent. So we can see underneath that layer. And then we've got our Memphis Entrepreneur Club logo in the top right hand corner. So if I did bring a webcam in here on one of these layers, um, I can have the webcam on the same layer as our VJ loop, right? So let's say I go in here and add a webcam. So I'll do a capture device. Let's see if we can find life cam. I think this is facing my, my window. All right, so I just brought in audio. Let's delete that shot. Let's add a screen capture maybe. Can we do? All right, here it goes. Microsoft life cam. So we can bring in a camera or webcam. This camera is 720p. Um, I think maybe the settings are, are set to something else, but I can go in here and edit the properties of this camera. So right now, capture device size is set to 640 by 360. I'm gonna change this to 1280 by 720. And I'm gonna set um, the uh, shot layer properties of this to scale to fit. And then I'm gonna bring this up from 100 to 101. And now we have our webcam in here. All right, so let's say this was a camera. I'm gonna move that a little bit. All right, so that's sitting on on top of, of my one of my computer monitors. And I just shook the monitor so you can see that it was actually live. Um, so let's say this was a camera pointing towards your interview, you know, shot, right? So this webcam now is on the same shot layer as our VJ video loop. So when we cue the webcam, the loop goes out of the preview. That means it disables the video and enables the webcam, right? Because we don't want both of them playing at the same time, which is gonna take up some of our CPU and processing power. We wanna actually cue them separately, but we keep them on the same shot so that we don't accidentally turn them both on at the same time, because you can't use two layers in one shot at the same time unless they're inside of the layer for that shot. So if I add it, this VJ loop on top of my webcam in this shot, then we can cue them both at the same time. For example, I'll turn the audio off on this VJ loop because we don't need audio and I'll even turn it down. But I'll go in here and add another layer. We're gonna choose capture devices, Microsoft Life Cam, and I'm gonna adjust the Life Cam down in scale. Now we have our Life Cam. Actually, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more to where we have the video behind it, right? So let's do like that and see what that looks like. So we have our full screen webcam and then we have our webcam with the video behind it because webcam here, video here. I'm gonna push that over to my live shot. And because the webcam is actually one source, when we bring the webcam inside of this shot and inside of a separate shot, the source or the aspect ratio or the changes that you make to that webcam um, the transition of those changes will play in real time. So since the size of this webcam shot is full screen and the size of this webcam shot is not full screen, it'll actually display the transition. Let's see if we can. All right, so you see how it just transitioned from the big shot to the little one? All right, so what I would do from here, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this video shot. Um, the next thing that I want to do is make sure that uh, I have any other assets. You pretty much wanna create all of your assets ahead of time. So, you know, let's say you want to do a, a uh, B-roll or an advertisement somewhere inside of your live stream. You've gotta create the video beforehand, import that video in here. So. I'm gonna go in here and bring in a video. We want this video to be on the very top layer because this is going to overlay everything when we actually go to display our advertisement. So I'll go and add a media file. We're gonna go and browse um, projects, websites, label us, advertisements, and we're gonna grab this advertisement. And I'm gonna set this again to 68% so that we can make sure it takes up the entire canvas. We're gonna leave the audio at 100%. We're gonna leave the audio on here. We're gonna turn this layer on and we're gonna make sure that, hey, once we actually go to run this layer, it's going to actually play audio. So you'll see audio start playing right here in the audio preview channel when we push this over live. And because this is on the very top shot layer, it's gonna show above everything else. We don't necessarily have to cut this layer 
this layer or this layer off, right? So assuming that we have this running in the background, we can bring our video on top of all of that and it'll play in real time. All right, so this is gonna play to our audience. They're gonna hear the audio. Uh, we can cut off our mic by disabling our desktop shot when we do run this ad. And at the end of the desktop shot or the end of the ad, we can bring our desktop shot back on so that we can hear our audio, right? So a couple of settings that you guys have to be aware of when importing uh, content into your stream. As far as like a, a video advertisement, let's say we have this video ad here and it has audio. We don't want this video to loop. By default, when you bring a video or audio shot into your Wirecast, it's going to be set to loop. I'm gonna click on this shot. I'm gonna go over to the shot layers and click on the layer that I want to edit. In this case, it's our video ad. We have audio enabled and we have the eye icon enabled so that we can see and hear this when we push it over to our live audience. I'm gonna click on the transition properties. Here you can choose how you want this to fade in. It can fade in from the top, bottom, scale in, or spin in. We usually choose fade in for everything, and we might wanna fade this in and have it slide from the top or from the bottom. Um, we keep this to um, fade in from middle and to middle by default if it's a video. And then on the three dot icon, we have source properties at the very end for this layer inside of this shot. So layer, shot, shot, layer, shot, layer, shot, layer, shot, layer, shot, layer, and you can have multiple layers in each shot. So I'm gonna edit the source properties for this advertisement, and we're gonna make sure that this video, when finished, is not set to loop. We're gonna set this to remove. We wanna remove this video from our shot when it finishes. Um, and we wanna begin playing media when the media becomes live by default. And we want to also have checked remember position even when not live. All right, so for this video, we might even want to go back and disable that option because when I bring this shot back off to a clear layer, black shot, right? And I bring it back in, it's going to, if we have remember position even when not live, it's gonna continue where it left off. And I don't necessarily want that to happen for this ad. So I'm gonna bring it back and it continues where it left off. I turn it off, I bring it back. All right, so I'm gonna disable that option, remember position even when not live, because when I clear this layer, I wanna bring it back in from the beginning if I decide to run this ad again. And boom. All right, so it starts from there. I'm gonna clear it and go back to my webcam. And then I might wanna run this ad again at the end of the video, at the end of the live stream, and it's gonna start back from the beginning. And now I'm gonna turn it back off. So there's our advertisement, which is on the same layer as our logo. I keep my logo on the same layer as the ad because when the ad is running, I don't want you to see the logo, but I want the logo to be on the very top layer on top of everything else that I'm doing in my stream. But I want the video to be on top of everything when the, when the ad runs. So those two on the very top layer together. You can't run each layer simultaneously unless they are in the same shot. So if I go into the shot layers and add that video here, then I can have that layer, that video underneath this logo if I wanted it there, right? Um, but I don't. I want the logo to be on its own individual shot. So for music, if I were to go and add a media file and go and add that music, let's go back, projects, computer, business entrepreneur, audio. I'll go over to the shot uh, source properties and when finished, maybe have this to set uh, set to loop. So the music continuously plays. I definitely want to have remember position even when not live because this is music. Now, if this music layer was active and it was live, which the music starts to play right here, you can see the audio. Um, start to play and that's at hundred percent right now if I did have a microphone I don't want to change this music shot to be something like uh, 10% I'll hit enter All Right, so there's our music shot. We have it set in the audio properties to 10% I push that over at 10% and the volume goes down now my voice 
can overlay all of the music which is at 10 percent uh, but you know i want to have this set to loop and i don't want this shot to reset itself every time i add another source so right now you see our video playing in the background our title card and our logo which are three different layers and let's say i just wanted to turn that logo off if i turn that logo off and push a new sh um preview over to my audience which basically turns the logo off the music is going to to restart playing from the beginning if i don't have this option checked remember position even when not live so if i disable this and i go and turn on and off a different layer in a different shot that music is going to start over and that's going to be annoying that's not going to be organic it's not going to sound like it was intentional so you definitely want to make sure whatever music track you have playing you have this selected whatever video tracks that you have playing if they're not a loop like this is in the background this this uh pyramid thing that you see back here if it's not a loop like that you want to make sure you have it set to remove by default the video is set to loop and it's set to remember position because we don't want that to re-cue when we cue other layers all right i hope that all makes sense so with all of that being said we pretty much have our entire um live stream setup minus the audio of course um, you would have to use whatever audio device that you have installed on your computer whatever microphone you're using or external audio interface um, I like to have the let's see I like to go over to window let's see let's see let's see I think I like to use preferences um, and general audio interface I use primary sound driver or sometimes I use headphone, which the headphones are hooked up directly into my computer or my motherboard audio. So any audio that I do have playing out of this will come out of my headphones. So when I use my microphone input from my audio interface, which is external, it's not going to conflict uh, with anything else. So I'll be listening to the audio in my headphones if I choose to by enabling this. and um i can have my mic coming out of a totally different audio interface i might have four or five different microphones hooked up and depending on what audio interface you're using you might be able to go in and use something like an audio interface um software to manage those different mic inputs volume levels um, especially if you have a MIDI device that controls those you can have someone manage that for you if you're doing a podcast so that you can make sure your audio inputs are um, at an optimal volume and not peaking sometimes my audio is peaking so you want to record maybe a quick uh, video with audio directly to your desktop to see what the audio sounds like as you do the live stream to kind of get used to it before you push this over to a live stream to your audience um, but this is how i set up some of those assets now another cool thing that i could do is bring in uh, into my stream you know something a little more unique so this title shot or, or title card you could call it has a transparent background with white red and yellow text maybe i want to have transparent text in a solid colored background where the video shows through the text so what i'll do is right click this text since i'm in adobe fireworks i'll convert the text to a path i'll right click this text and convert it to a path i'll ungroup the text and right now I'm going to maybe hide my, my or lock my background, right? So that I can't select it or manipulate it. I'll grab the text that's one color. I'll go modify, com combine paths, union. I'll grab this other text that's white. Um, and I'll do the same thing with all the white text. So let me grab all the white text and ungroup it. Grab all this white text. And then modify, combine paths and union. And then I'll grab all my red text, modify, combine paths, union, right? And to ungroup the text when you convert it from a text to a path, you type Control Shift G or Command Shift G if you're on a Mac. Uh, once it's ungrouped, you can select all the text individually. So now I have all my white text here, all my red text, and all my yellow text all as three different layers. I'm going to grab and unlock my background and I'm going to set this background to be 100%. We're going to change this to, let's do a, maybe a gradient. Let's do a gradient or yeah, let's do a gradient. Let's go to Google and find a cool gradient that we can use. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome, wherever that's at. 
and I'm gonna go over to Google and I'm gonna search for gradients I'm gonna click on images tools size large and we're gonna find one of these large gradients that we want to use this one looks pretty cool I might want to grab two so since this is not transparent I can copy it directly and I can go over to Adobe Fireworks and click on my background and paste this over the top of my background. If I zoom out, we see what size this gradient actually is. I'm just going to keep it as is. I'm going to go and grab another gradient so we can have two to compare. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to close this and I'm going to open up Firefox. Fireworks, I mean. I'm going to paste that. And we have two different ones to compare. I kind of like this one better, so I'll delete the other one. Now, this one is actually 1920 by 1080, so this fits our canvas um, flush. There's no space in between the canvas and the background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete, um, I'm going to hide my gradient. I'm going to hide my background, which is black. I'm going to bring my gradient back up, and then I'm going to grab this text, this white text. Um, I'm going to actually grab all of my text. I'm going to hold shift and select it all. I'm gonna type Control Shift D to duplicate it, right? So now we have two copies. I'm gonna take that duplicated text, go to Modify, Combine Paths, and Union. Now this is all gonna be one color, one layer. So we have this one big layer, and then we have these three individual layers underneath it. What I'm gonna do with the one big layer is set that layer um, right on top of my gradient, and then we're gonna set that gradient to be um, an erase filter. So um, you can change the blend mode to erase. This is going to erase basically everything underneath it, which is right now we just have this gradient underneath it. So if I turn off these other three layers of text, we have a transparent background behind the text because we're using the erase blend mode, right? So I might want to go back and show those three layers of text. And I'm going to change the layers of text to be 50% transparent. So we're going to change this layer to 50%. We're going to change our white, white layer to 50%. We're going to change our yellow layer to 50%. And now we have this 50% transparency of our white, red, and yellow so that those can stand out uh, on top of whatever we have behind our gradient. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a second. So uh, what I'm going to do is Control Shift S to save this. We're going to save this as transparent title one we're gonna go over to our live um, to our um, broadcast and we're gonna set this on the same layer as our original title card that we used. we're gonna put that on another shot in the same shot layer so we have a clear layer the shot one for this layer and shot number two where we're gonna add a media file we're gonna go over and browse for this uh, picture we saved I saved this in throwaway we're going to go and find the L's because I think I saved, no, T's. I saved this as title, maybe. I don't know. Here it is, transparent. And I'm going to set this again to be 68% um, instead of 67. Now, when I bring this over to my live shot, it's going to hide the current cool live stream title and it's going to bring in our gradient with that little bit of transparent background there. All right, and I have to bring my video back in as well. So video. Now we have video behind our cool live stream shot layer. It doesn't look as nice. So maybe I can change the color of the cool stream and present it by text to uh, red. And maybe the Coriolans text to red as well. I don't know. We'll see. Let's, let's just try to make it stand out a little bit more. All right, so instead of having it white, I'm going to change all of this to blue doesn't stand out nearly as much either green kind of stands out a little bit more uh, maybe bring Coriolans to be red I can save this control s and it's going to automatically update what's inside of my uh, wirecast software so cool live stream I'm not a big fan of that yellow kind of looks like urine so I'm going to change that or green let's change that to a baby blue and see what that looks like control s to save it and that looks kind of cool. I, I like it. Uh, stands out well enough. 
live uh, Corey Owens cool I like that so this is what my audience would see um, I can go in here and go over to Adobe Fireworks and um, technically let's go and open file open recent we're gonna open our title one shot that we originally saved and I'm gonna change this text to um, please stand by instead of presented by so please whoops I'm gonna set the align to align to the right so that when we go and type new text it's gonna stay where it is align to the right now I can go and change this to uh, please stand by um, you know something like broadcast starting soon Or let's say we'll change this big text to please or just yeah please stand by and I'll change this please stand by here to broadcast starting soon all right so I'm gonna save this actually I'm gonna copy this text all of it I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna paste this text here and I'm gonna move it up you know maybe uh, I'm gonna move it down a couple of shots I'm gonna right click it convert to path right click convert to path and I want to change let's see let's see let's see so that's like a blue color and this is red so I want to delete our other text that we had in here and bring in this new text ungroup it let's lock our background so we'll grab everything that's white modify combine paths union everything that's red and even this yellow text too modify combine paths union and we're gonna make sure that's red this live stream I'm gonna set this to uh, I think the color that we used was like a teal right and again I'm gonna copy um, select both of those layers control we can do control C and then control V or control shift D to duplicate modify combine paths union I'm gonna set that to erase in the blend mode and then I'm gonna bring this right on top of my uh, gradient and then I'm gonna change this overlaying blue and red text to be 50% transparency and there we have our live stream broadcast starting soon I'm gonna control shift s to save this as a new title card uh, transparent title to save I'm gonna go inside of Wirecast and inside of the same layer I'm gonna add another media file and we're gonna choose the transparent title two and I'm gonna move this over as the first available slot so if I bring that in we have cool live stream broadcast starting soon please stand by and then we have a um, cool live stream presented by Corey Owens and then we can add a third one to say this broadcast has concluded which we will run at the very end of the stream and we might even include a full volume audio to be on top of that same layer so let's go ahead and do that right now actually so I'll do a third title this broadcast has concluded And let's do featuring Corey Owens. So maybe change from this broadcast has concluded to broadcast concluded. Featuring Corey Owens. Again, I can go ahead and modify, convert this to paths. Mod right click, convert to paths, ungroup everything, um, lock our background, and you know, grab all of our white text. Modify combined paths union all of our red text and yellow text since those will all be red anyway modify combined paths union I'm gonna duplicate these and Modify combined paths union I'm gonna set this one to be erase and bring that underneath my other two layers, which is 
this white and this red. I'm going to change the white to baby blue again and set it to 50%. So I'm going to select my red, set both of those to 50%. I know I'm going kind of fast, but you know this is basically how uh, to do it all quickly. I've got a transparent version, and then I've got the the uh, or I'm sorry, I've got the erased layer, which erases everything underneath it. And then I've got my um, blue and red text that is going to be 50% transparent. I'm going to select all three of those layers, copy them, bring them into my gradient um, canvas. I'm going to hide all this other text and then I'm going to type paste, control V. I'm going to make sure I'm zoomed out enough so this paste in the right place. Now I can save this, control shift S as title three. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go inside of uh, my shot properties. I'm going to add another shot. So I'm going to add a media file. We're going to browse for number three. And again, I want to make sure that these are set to 68% instead of 67. Inside of this shot, I'm going to go over to the layers and I'm going to add another layer, which is going to be a media file. And this doesn't have to be a 30 minute media file since this is just the concluding music. Maybe I have something kind of upbeat. So I'll go projects, um, computer, Memphis Entrepreneur, audio, music, artist, P. Morris, and we'll find um, once it loads, hopefully our, our program doesn't just crash on us. And I'll grab um, Quick Cash because that's the music that we use inside of our um, our little preview, our little promo commercial. All right, so I'm gonna set this audio to, uh, I'm gonna go click on the audio properties inside of this shot and I'm gonna set the uh, source properties for that audio to remove itself. Right, and we want to make sure that remember position even when not live is selected. And now when we go and cue this, I'm going to turn on the audio so you guys can hear it a little bit maybe. Uh, when we go and uh, cue the ending broadcasting shot, um, it's going to cue the audio with it since that's in the exact same layer, which means I'll turn off the audio here. So while this audio is playing during the live stream at 10%, at the end, we want to turn this audio off by selecting the clear layer and selecting the layer that has our concluded text with our uh, fully, you know, 100% level volume, right? So turn our main audio off that's on during the broadcast and we'll have new audio come in with this layer. Let's see. Uh, oh, we had it turned off. So you want to make sure that audio is turned on. So let me go back and clear that layer and bring in the live stream one. Okay, so now I bring this shot in and it has the audio turned on. I'll go here. So I'm gonna turn that off. Let me turn off my music as well. All right, so you can hear the music that's playing when I when I cue this shot. but. All right, so now when I go back and turn this on, I'm actually gonna set that music properties to be um, to not be remembered. So I'm gonna deselect this remember position even when not live, because every time I cue this, I want this music to start over from scratch. When I cue this, I'm not gonna bring in any other shots because this is the absolute last slide that you're gonna see after the outro promo, which I might have up here. So we've got you know our B-roll, right? So our B-roll can come in here and play in f with full audio. And then I go back to my live stream. At the end of the live stream, I might, you know, um, show this. Maybe it'll be some, um, like, what do you call it? A, a, uh, 
when it shows like the credits, the rolling credits of like thank yous or or who was featured in the stream. And then I might go and cue an outro video that's like kind of the promo, the same thing that you see as an intro or an outro music to a, a podcast. And then we'll have the this live stream has concluded because we, we want to run this while the music plays in case people are still commenting, saying, oh, I really enjoyed this live stream. We want those comments to play in real time. Um, you know while this music is playing so the live stream is going to continuously run while this video is in the background so i cue this and broadcast concluded So I might even want to have my logo up there. Let's review the top 20. And one thing that I can do to make sure that my logo really stands out there is I'll go file, open recent, we'll open our logo, and I'm going to change this logo to be uh, totally black, right? Or let's see what it looks like with maybe white. I think white might stand out pretty well but let's 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 do white and see what that looks like first and we have a black grow glow so i'll save this as a new logo so we're going to save this as logo two i'm going to go in here and import logo two as a media file computer projects throw away l logo two and that's what this is going to look like the top 20. So I might want to go and change the color of that logo to be black and remove the glow around it. We're going to save that. And that looks a little bit better. Um, pretty cool. I can even go in here and edit. Instead of adding another logo shot, I can delete this logo shot, right? and go into Adobe Fireworks to my last Title III card. I'll grab that logo, copy it, paste it inside of my Title III shot, and I'll set that logo, no matter what color it is, to erase, and I'll save this Title III shot. Now we have transparency in that Title III shot where the video is gonna play behind the logo and it's gonna look more uniform. Let's review the top 20. So instead of having a gradient background, I might even want to kind of brand the broadcast to um, have some type of, let me go and open up Google Chrome, um, some type of image. So let's go and search maybe, um, you know, success wallpapers or, or something, uh, luxury lifestyle wallpaper. We're going to click on images, search uh, size large we're gonna grab a cool image this one looks pretty cool we're gonna make sure it is high quality i'm gonna wait into this loading uh thing kind of clears up so that the image clears up i'm gonna right click and copy this image since there is no transparency i can just copy it directly and i can go in here and paste this image right here on top of our gradient to replace the gradient then i'm going to transform it to make sure it fits the entire canvas all right, this is pretty cool. And, um, you know, let's just go and save it and see what it looks like. So it saves everything in real time. We can go inside of Wirecast to look at our changes. Let me bring that shot in here and boom. Let's review the top 20. So what I'm going to do instead is find a different image and I'm going to change the color of this text. This is my whole process. Uh, let's see if we can find this something that uh, I kind of like this one. This is cool. Uh, I don't really care too much about the cars right now. This image is really big. I like the contrast. This one's kind of cool. I'm going to find some, something that's a little bit dark uh, so that we can have a brighter colored text. 
Uh, so maybe even I'll do this image right here. No, we can't do that one. Or we could. I'm going to copy this image. I'm going to go open up fireworks. I'm going to paste that image here, transform it to fit inside of our canvas. And then I'm going to bring this a little bit bigger to make sure we don't have any random text sitting out there. I'm going to change the color of my overlay text to white or maybe change the blue to white. And I'm going to delete this image right here. Delete that. We're going to show our our background. I'm going to delete our gradient and delete that as well. I'm going to set our background to I'm going to move this background above our image, turn our image back on and change this background to something like 50%, this black overlay to 50%. Now we've got this black overlay, our image and our transparency is still set in here. So we've got this text where it says live stream. And then we have the transparent text. Okay. I'm going to save this. Now, when I go and push this live stream, um, or, or this preview over into my live stream, I should still see that video in the background. So I'm going to go and push that over. Let's review the top 20. So while it looks like I have several different videos inside of like one big layer, this is pretty much how it's all lined, uh, laid out. I've got a video layer, which I'm going to go ahead and play inside of my preview shot. And if I move my image layer out of the way, you see the video is playing in the background. Let's say I move our video layer over. We've got our desktop background still back there. So this live shot actually only shows up, you know, the video shows up under that transparent text where we've got a full image here. So that's pretty much how I set up everything. I can hit control Z if I want to undo all those moves I just made. And that's what it's going to look like in my live shot. I'm going to turn that audio off and my audio, my audience can still hear this audio, but I've got the audio turned off in my headphones, right? So because I don't want to preview it, I don't want to hear it come back through my microphone and I don't want to hear it come back through my headphones. It might throw me off. So I don't hear the music. I just know the music is playing, uh, because I can see the, the audio, um, whatever you call it, the visualizer or whatever you call this thing spectrum um and if the music is too loud i know that the music is at 100 percent based on how high the spectrum goes so i can go and change the settings if i was trying to talk over the music i can change the settings from 100 to 10 or 20 percent so that my audience can hear my voice uh but this is pretty much how i create my live streams and make them look really uh visually uh enhanced make them look really professional um let me think of anything else that I might have left out. So after you create all the assets, the title shots, the intro title shot, the video that you're going to use as a promo, uh, the logo overlays, the outro uh, video or the outro audio, the broadcast concluded, broadcast starting soon or featuring or whatever, all those shots that you might want to add. After you design those, you're going to add those in each individual layer to make it easy for you to navigate through them because chances are you're going to be managing this broadcast yourself. Um, and you might be clicking and managing the broadcast while you're doing the broadcast. So you're a one man band just kind of, you know, setting up this entire broadcast. Um, but after all of that is said and done, you've got to be able to now go and set up how you want to stream this broadcast. So the first thing you want to do is click on output and output settings. You're going to, by default, we're going to choose record to disk MP4. If your computer can handle recording to your computer and doing the live stream simultaneously, um, I definitely recommend always recording to MP4 when you do live stream so that you can have a 720 or 1080p version of this video available. Sometimes when you record to Facebook in 720p, especially 30 minute, one hour, two hour, three hour videos, 
you can't download that video from Facebook in 1080p or in 720p. It'll download in 620p or 300 and something 20p, which is going to be really low quality. You can't go and upload that 320p video to YouTube to repurpose it. So it's going to, you're going to have a hard time trying to access that video. Um, but if you have to do that and you, you can't, your computer can't process recording to your desktop and doing the live stream, then you can go and watch your live stream, the replay of it in full screen and use Wirecast to record that full screen 720p replay so that you can save that to your computer and go back and upload it later. Hope that makes sense. But whenever possible, always record to disk when you do live streams because you might want to save that 720 or 1080p video. I'm going to save this as my live stream uh, tutorial mp4 i'm going to set these settings from default 720p to default 1080p and we're probably going to use 30 frames a second unless we've got video playing um and we want to you know and our computer can handle 60 frames a second right if we have really high quality video playing in the background or if we're using a high quality 4k camera or 1080p camera and we'll, we want it to be smooth as possible for the interview then i might do 1080p uh 60 frames a second you can usually get away with doing 30. I'm going to go ahead and choose 1080p 60 frames a second because I like to have the highest quality possible in my MP4s that I upload up to YouTube. Um, there's my live stream. I'm going to browse and save this uh, to my desktop for now. Save uh, my live stream tutorial. I'm going to add a live stream now and we're going to choose live stream to Facebook. So Facebook live. Okay. You're going to have to click on authenticate to log into your Facebook account. So if you're going to live stream to your Facebook page, um, you have to sign into an account of the person or one of the people who manages or is an admin of that page. If you're gonna stream from your profile, you have to log into your profile that you're going to use to stream from. So I'm gonna log into my Facebook account. I'm gonna click uh, keep, log me, uh, keep me logged in. I'm gonna click log in. And this is gonna authenticate me. Now by default, it's gonna have pages selected. I wanna live stream this to my profile. So the first thing you have to do is choose where you're gonna stream this to. I'm gonna create a title for my video on Facebook. So dope live stream um, tutorial. And this is going to be example, right? Cause I'm gonna live stream this over to Facebook while I'm live right now doing this tutorial. So you're going to see two live videos from me on my Facebook profile simultaneously. But the description is also important because the description is the first thing people see when they see that you are live um, in their news feed. So uh, this is the example of the live stream that I'm uh, showing you how to create in my other live stream on my Facebook uh, profile. And after you have done the description and the title, maybe you want to have a link to your website in the description. You can go and get a Google URL shortener to create a shortened URL. Um, if you have a long like affiliate link you want to add in here, I'm going to hit shift enter to line break twice and I'm going to add my URL. So, uh, you know, go to my website at www. And I'm going to use, make sure you use HTTP colon forward slash forward slash or HTTPS if the website that you're linking to has a, has an SSL certificate. Um, in my case, I'll just use HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.coreyowens.com. And I'm going to click on create after all of this is done. Once I click create, this is going to create the live stream URL to my Facebook page. Now, if I go and change anything in my description or title, I have to re-click the create button so that it can create a new URL. And I can't do any changes while I'm live. I have to create all of this before I click the create button. Now, when I go live, if I want to change the title or if I want to change the description, I have to go over to my Facebook profile and edit the video itself while I'm logged into Facebook. I'm going to change the name of this to Facebook profile. And we're going to uh, click on add. Now I might want to stream over to another Facebook page. So I'm going to click on Facebook page or, or Facebook live. I'm going to click on OK. 
by default this is 720p 30 frames a second um, and i'm going to change this to uh, from profile to pages I'm gonna go and search for my page, Corey Owens. Now I'm, I'm streaming not only to my Facebook profile, but to my Corey Owens Facebook page. I'm gonna click on, um, I'm gonna change the name to Facebook Corey Owens Pro, no, page, so that I can know the difference, and I'm going to click on Create. Now I have a link created for the Facebook profile and for the Facebook page. Let's say I do go over to live stream and I don't want to stream over to YouTube or Twitch or to a Facebook page, but I have those set up in here. I'm gonna dis or uncheck the Facebook page, right? So that when I do click the stream button, it only streams over to the live boxes that I have enabled or checked. So maybe I just wanna stream over to my profile first, and then I wanna do the same stream I wanna do a second stream using the same information over to my page. I'll go back once I end the stream and highlight Facebook page and deselect Facebook profile. So now I have Facebook profile, Facebook page, and uh, record to disk all enabled. I can go and add 10 more Facebook pages if I manage more pages that I wanna to stream to, and I can stream to all of those simultaneously. I can go in here and add um, YouTube, and I can go in here and add Twitch, or I can go in and add Periscope, uh, which is Twitter, and another Facebook Live if I wanted to, and stream across those platforms simultaneously. I'll go ahead and click OK once we have our links created. Again, if you go and change anything in the description or the title, you have to re-click this button to reset the stream URL with the new information. And I'm gonna click OK. Now I'm gonna change this, um, my, my gradient background that I was using, um, I might want to go ahead and add um, this same information over to, let's say, let me go and open, file open recent. We're gonna open title two, file open recent. I'm gonna open title one. I'm gonna go and grab Let's close this logo and title the original title one. Um, I'm gonna grab my logo and our background image and the background, the black overlay. I'm gonna copy all of that. I'm gonna go over to title two. I'm gonna delete um, the gradient and the background. And we're gonna paste this new stuff in here. Let me, let me undo that. Let me go back to this and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna click on canvas size and I'm just gonna click okay. By doing this, by just clicking canvas size and clicking okay, this automatically trims anything outside of my canvas. So now I can go and copy the background and the logo. We're gonna copy that. I'm gonna go over to transparent title two, paste that and make sure that it's on the very bottom. We're gonna save this. And we're gonna make sure that this cool text is white instead of blue. I'm gonna save it again. I'm gonna to go to transparent title one, delete the background, paste our new um, background, move that to the very bottom, change the color of this blue to white, save this. I'm gonna minimize this and now we have um, our new background. So, so we've got our please stand by. I'm gonna go back and reset this to 101% so that we don't have that video showing around the edges. I'm gonna go to my second one, make sure that's set at 101%. Push that over, see what it looks like. I'm gonna go to my third and make sure that's set to 101%. And the last thing that I'm gonna do, instead of having this video, this VJ loop, in the background like this, I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna to go to each individual layer and add that video now behind. Whoops, we accidentally unlocked our um, X and Y scale. So I'm gonna set this to 101 and I'm gonna lock that. Can we lock it? Let's reset, there we go. So 
so I think we have the wrong layer selected I'm gonna select my image so because this third this third one I just tried to change the size of of my music which it doesn't have a size so I had the wrong layer inside of this shot selected so I'm gonna go and select the right layer I'm gonna set this size to 101 and now I'll go into each layer and add that video so um, as you can see if I have this video playing in the background like this when we transition from one video to the next it fades out and shows that video behind it and I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna turn my video layer off and I'm gonna go to each shot and add that video inside of its layers so I'm gonna go and add a media file uh, we don't have to set this to 100% because our uh, canvas is already set to 100% go to projects um, stock videos I'm gonna import the same video which means it's not gonna add a new resource it's just gonna take from the original resource and I'm gonna pull this down using the down arrow underneath our shot right so our image is at 101 our video is at 100% which is why that yellow uh, border is around there but that's okay because our image is bigger than our video so you won't see that border anyway I'm gonna go to the second shot do the same thing add a media file I'm going to grab that image, pull it down, make sure the audio is turned off and at 0%. Do the same thing for this one. Video audio off and 0%. I'll do the same thing for the third layer. We're going to go and add a media file. This one has music as well. I'm going to choose media file, same media file, turn the audio off, set it to 0% and move it down two layers now when we go from uh, image to image we're gonna have more of a well we should anyways let's see and I think this might change it's gonna show our video because of um, the fade that we have set on the image so the last thing I'm gonna do is change this fade this transition of each image in these shots um, to be no fade no fade so we just want it to move um, to switch to the next image so uh, no fade no fade so maybe the first shot will have a fade in um, or fade out maybe we can have a fade in and fade out uh, because when I go from one of these uh, shots to the next um, I'm, I'm not even going to be going from this shot to this shot um, with this one I might be so for the first shot where it says broadcast starting soon I'll have fade in and I'll d disable fade out for the presented by Corey Owens I'm going to have um, fade out and I'm going to disable fade in and then for the final shot I'm going to have fade in and fade out because that's going to be our last shot anyways so let's say our first shot is cool live stream broadcast um, broadcast starting soon the next shot is going to be immediately um, switched over and it's going to say presented by Corey Owen. so as you can see let me go back broadcast starting soon and then I switch over to, to present it by it's just going to automatically switch and then the next thing I might show is you know maybe a video or my webcam and then the last shot will be the concluded broadcast which is going to fade in all right so broadcast concluded so of course I can have other things in here like um, I can go into Adobe Fireworks I can hide all of this stuff or uh, yeah I'm just gonna I'm gonna delete all of this I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to set this to be 1920 in width height might be maybe 150 um, I'm going to set this position to zero by zero and I'm going to align this to the very bottom of my canvas maybe change the color of this to yellow and then I'll put some black text on it I'm gonna set this text to be black really doesn't matter the color of the text because I'm going to fade it out anyway so this is gonna say 
we we're on Snapchat. Snap us at Memphis Entrepreneur. I'm going to center that to my canvas. And then I'm going to select both of these layers and center them to objects to each other. I'm actually going to change the size of this yellow overlay. Actually, uh, increase the size of my text a little bit. Make sure it's centered. Center that to the canvas. Center it to the object. And then I'm going to take this Memphis Entrepreneur text and kind of stretch it out a little bit. So it's easier for people to read. Now I'm going to try to go and find my Snapchat snap code. Thrasher, graphic design, websites, I think. We're going to go over to uh, Memphis Entrepreneur Club. And you can go over to snapchat.com forward slash add forward slash your Snapchat handle or URL and be able to find your Snapchat snap code and download it. You can log into Snapchat at snapchat.com at the very bottom in the footer, I believe. Maybe it's in the top right hand corner and you can choose to download your snap code as well. It's not going to be a vector. It doesn't really need to be for this, but I think I have mine created already. Snapchat. Uh, let's see if we can find it. I've turned my Snapchat into a vector already so I'm gonna go and open this or I'm just gonna drag that in here and I've got multiple different layers I'm gonna delete all the hidden layers and I'm gonna grab let's see we got this border we got the ghost we've got the ghost outline and we've got our snap code underneath our border we want to have that uh we transform all of these. We're going to have our yellow text. So I'm going to take this outline, duplicate it, convert it to a flattened object, and I'm going to select everything outside of it. Control Shift I to inverse that selection. Right click the selection, modify the mark, and we're going to contract this to maybe three, five pixels. Right click and modify the mark again and convert those pixels to a path. I'm going to change the color of that to yellow. I'm going to get rid of that border and I'm going to move this underneath all of my other layers. And I just want to make sure that everything else is pretty much solid. I'm going to give this a no border or ghost. I'm going to change the color of our ghost to white. And then I'm going to go and find an image that I can use um inside of let's grab this image i'm going to right click and copy this image inside of our ghost i'm going to click on our ghost and uh actually i'm going to click on our yellow background and hit Control v to paste this image in between the the yellow background of our snap code and i'm going to transform it to fit inside of our ghost. And we want this to kind of be as flush as possible. I'm going to take the ghost and kind of make it transparent so that I can move this image exactly where I want it. That's kind of cool. That's good right there. I'm going to make my ghost back 100%. We're going to set our ghost to be totally transparent with no fill and no trim. Right, we're going to grab our image, Control X to cut the image. We're going to grab our ghost, and we're going to hit Control Shift V as in vector to, or V as in Veronica to paste this inside of our ghost. Control Shift V. All right, there's our image inside of our ghost. I'll grab all of that and group it together. Control G. I'll actually delete this bitmap that we created. I'm going to group this. Control shift D to duplicate it. So we have a backup. I'm going to hide the backup and move this snap code over to the edge of our text. And I think this is a pretty good size. I think we can do this. That's cool. And I might even go in here and add something like an ellipse, like a really big ellipse. I'm going to change the color of the ellipse to black. 
I'm going to give that ellipse a change the ellipse from an anti alias edge to a feathered edge and make that feather something like 100%, maybe 250 if I can. And I'm going to hit Control, Shift, Alt, and Z to flatten that ellipse. I'm going to move this over into our corner, change the transparency a little bit. And then I'm going to bring that underneath all of our layers, right? So I've got this big ellipse that I just made, like almost a 50% transparency. And I'm going to kind of transform it a little bit. So what I'm doing now is holding the alt button when I transform the height so that I can move this behind our snap code and I'm going to change the transparency down even more. All right. So that means if we have any video or anything underneath um, this entire layer that we're going to pull up inside of Wirecast, this black layer is going to, or this this ellipse that we just created is going to kind of show like a casted shadow in that bottom right hand corner to make this snap code stand out a little bit more amongst our video. All right. So, um, I'm going to go and click on canvas, click on my canvas, click on canvas size, just click. Okay. Now this, uh, transparent thing we created is going to be trimmed and I'm going to grab our mark tool select the bottom of that um, transparent ellipse, delete a little bit of it. All right. So now if I hide this yellow layer, this is what we see, All right? I'm going to grab my text. We're on Snapchat, snap us at Memphis entrepreneur. And what I'm going to do from here is um, set the blend mode to that text to erase. All right, so I can go in here and ungroup control shift G my um, snap code that I've created and this ghost that I added a picture into, I can even go in here instead of having a picture, I can have a video if I wanted to, I can set the blend mode for this picture, which is inside of the ghost to erase as well, which means it's going to erase everything underneath it, including this shadow. All right, so if I wanted to do this, I'm going to control shift S to save this as Snapchat. Now I'm going to go inside of Wirecast and I'm going to do some other cool things, right? So, um, let's say I want to go in here and import our Snapchat, um, overlay. And we're going to have that, um, we're going to have our logo here at the very top. Let's say right now we just have our desktop showing, right? Or our webcam. I'm going to go and open the window. kind of creepy like uh some disturbia stuff but let's say that this was our um let's say that this was our um you know our broadcast and we were doing an interview right and we had our logo over the top of everything uh maybe i can even change this logo really quick let me go and change the color of this logo open recent logo i'm going to change this to black and see what that looks like And that looks way better. Oh, hey, uh, family. And the black kind of stands out a little more. That's kind of cool. Maybe let's see what it looks like all white. Not bad. Uh, I don't know. Um, but, you know, let's assume that we had kind of a black background inside of our interview. Then we'd use a color that was most appropriate for this. Um, but 
where was I? Let's say I wanted to go now and add our Snapchat thing, but we want to keep our logo up here when we queue the Snapchat card. I'm going to go and add the Snapchat on this top or this second layer underneath our logo, which is the same shot layer that has our promo. But we want to keep our logo active when we queue the Snapchat card. So I'm going to go add media file. We're going to browse inside of our throwaway folder for, I think I'll save this as Snapchat. Uh, let's just, there it is. And again, I'm going to set this Snapchat um, to be, we're going to go over to the shot properties, Snapchat, make sure that's selected. I'm going to set this again to 101%. And I'm going to add inside of the shot layers, a two video file. So I'm going to add a media file. I'm going to browse projects, stock, video, uh, loops. And I'm going to grab something kind of weird, maybe just like some dust particles or something. Um, I'm going to set this to scale to fit because this is less than 1080p. And I'm going to move that shot layer. I'm going to turn the shot layer audio off. I'm going to go set the audio to zero. Go back to shot layer. Move that shot layer down underneath our Snapchat thing. So... You know, again, we have this whole shot layer where it's got our Snapchat URL or Snapchat bar, our snap code, and then the video behind it. I'm going to trim this video. I can actually click on the video and hold shift and the down arrow to move this where I want it. I'm going to trim the bottom and the top of this video by clicking on the shot layer properties. We're going to crop the top until it goes right above our text. We're going to crop the bottom until it goes right below our text. And then I'm going to add inside of the same layer, inside of the same shot, a new layer of a new video. So I'm going to find a video, media file. I'm going to go and find something that's kind of cool, uh, that's a little bit interesting. And maybe it's this girl, right? So if I just click play, you're going to see what this girl looks like it has audio so I know that I need to turn the audio off and turn the audio down to zero I'm going to go back to the shot layers and move this down below our snapchat now I can click and drag it and center it inside of our snapchat ghost I'm going to go back to the shot layer properties we're going to crop this on the left I'm going to crop it on the right so that it fits inside of our ghost we're going to crop it on the top and we'll crop it on the bottom. But instead of doing this, undo, 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 the first thing I wanna do is actually scale it down to fit inside of that ghost as best as possible so we're not cropping off too much important information. Now I can hold the up arrow, I can click on it. Let's see if we can click on it. I can't really, uh, but let me go back and select it. And I can change the, uh, can I do position? Oh, position. So negative 175 by 683. Okay, this is cool. I guess we can do that. I can go in here actually and let's let's actually move this up one layer so I can select it. Now I can select it and move it up with the up arrow so that it fits right in the center of our ghost. And now I'm going to bring it back down one layer and crop the left and right. So left, right. So I want this entire section where it has the video playing on the very bottom uh, inside of the text. I'm actually gonna change that video um, that I have behind this text so that you can see, uh, cause you can't really see those black particles in there cause the text is too small. So I'm gonna delete this video. I'm gonna add a different video. We're gonna choose a media file. We're gonna go browse for something interesting um, like this but uh, let's do this light leak and let's play that so you can see what it looks like. Can I play it? Let's turn it on. Let's select that and play it. All right. That's what that light leak looks like. Now I'm going to go back and set this, click the down arrow to move this under our uh, Snapchat layer that we created. I'm going to click on it, hold down shift and the down arrow. And there's a little little X in the center of the video to show us where the center is. I can kind of eye this and center it uh, vertically inside of our bar. 
and we're going to scale it up so that it fits behind all of our text and then I'm going to crop the top and crop the bottom now I want to go back to my shot layers click on that uh, snapchat layer and we want to I'm going to first turn off the volume of this light leak, which I keep forgetting to do and turn that volume all the way down just in case there is audio. I want to click on the Snapchat um, PNG file that we imported. I'm going to click on the um, uh, build in, build out properties. We want this to fade in, decelerate in. We want it to fade out decel or accelerate out. And we want to set this to fade in from the bottom and to fade out to the bottom. I'm going to go back to my light leak video. I'm going to set the uh, transition to the same. So fade in from bottom to bottom, decelerate in, accelerate out. By default, fade in and fade out are, are already selected. Back to my layers, I'm going to click on the girl running video. I'm going to do the same thing. Transition from bottom to bottom, decelerate, accelerate. And we're going to click on each layer to triple check to make sure we have those selected. So let's say we accidentally use the, uh, we accidentally bring the girl running, which is this right here, and we accidentally do a transition from left and to left, right? When we bring that in, that transition is gonna come in from the left side while everything else is gonna come in from the bottom, right? That doesn't look right. So we wanna actually make sure that we have all of these set to, the, to be the exact same thing. So when we clear that layer, it fades to the bottom. When we bring that layer in, it fades in from the bottom. And there's the video. Now, what I want these videos to do, I'm gonna click on the video layer, click on the source properties. I do want these to loop, but I don't want to remember the position. I want them to start over from the beginning. So I'm gonna go back to the other video, properties, loop. Don't remember the position, because we want them to start over every time we cue that. So I'm gonna bring this down bring it back on and the video will start over from scratch. All right, so we have video in our Snapchat icon and we have video inside of our text. We can see that that's animated and I can even go and clear this layer and bring in our other video. All right, and when I do this actually, um, you know, I'm actually gonna go and, and have these settings for these videos behind my Snapchat icon to actually remember the position in case I wanted to cue some other settings over here, some other layers, and I don't want those to restart. So I'm gonna go ahead and add remember position because it doesn't really matter what the positions are. So now that way, when we turn the video off, these keep playing where they are, right? Now here's our desktop. I can go in here, open up, you know, something like my iPhone. And as a matter of fact, I do have one comment, one reaction, three likes, two people watching. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my stream to see what you guys are, are saying. Turn that all the way down. Reaction, three and I got to invest into Wirecast. Yes, you do. All right, so I can go in here, manage this in real time so you guys can see what's happening um, or, or so you guys can, you know, bring in your iPhone even. So I'm going to show you something like that in just a second. Um, let me turn this, you know, but that's, that's my desktop, right? Pretty cool. Now, the last thing that I want to do with this Snapchat thing is I want to adjust a couple of settings. I'm going to go and grab my um, Snapchat file or my Snapchat uh, image. I'm going to bring this text. Uh, I'm going to set the erase back to normal and I'm going to set this text back to zero. I'm going to move all of this text over and you'll see why here in a second. And I'm going to make sure that this text is centered uh, vertically to my yellow Snapchat bar, which it appears to be. Move it down just a little bit. All right, that looks a little bit better. And now I'm going to save this. I'm going to take this text and turn it back to transparent or erase. And I'm going to hit control S to save it. 
Now it moved our text over a little bit. The last thing that I want to add inside of this Snapchat um, layer is a little animated GIF that also has a yellow background. So I'll go select my shot layer. I'll click on the layer properties. I'll add another layer. So right now I have the girl running at the very bottom, the light leak under that. If I turn this off, you see those two videos there, right? And I'm going to go and add another uh, media file. So I'm going to go and browse projects. Let's see, computer, thrasher, uh, graphic design, maybe. I don't know. Thrasher. Let's go computer. Psh, label us. See if I have any other uh, transparent assets that I've been using already. Uh, live stream assets. Show logo strings. No. Masterminds. No. Graphic design. Live stream. I don't think I have any of those assets in here. I don't. But let's search. Thrasher. Graphic design. I have uh, templates or loaders, loaders are somewhere, loaders. And I'm going to find that yellow background loader that I think is in here. And if it's not, I'm going to be kind of sad because it's somewhere on my computer. So let's find that really quick. Projects, live sh assets, live stream overlays. GIF, Facebook, nope, 3D, nope. Oh man, don't tell me I don't know where that is. I know I know where it's at, it's somewhere. Uh, Assets, overlays, top bars. There it is, source GIF. So this Snapchat GIF is really cool. I'm gonna bring this, reposition it to be uh, sitting on top of my Snapchat bar. I'm going to go and, you know, have it on the very top. Obviously, I can put it at the bottom, but I want it on the top. I'm going to uh, set this to be. I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to try to fit this right on top. So let's do like 31% maybe. And I'm going to move it over, select it, hold shift and the arrow key move it down a bit and I'm going to set the transition of this to decelerate accelerate from bottom to bottom we're gonna build this whole shot out and then I'm gonna build it back in to see where this GIF loads and there it is there's a really cool looking GIF right there that shows money coming out of the ghosts butthole basically um, and we have this video that's playing in here and a video that's playing underneath our text. It looks really cool. I want to move my text up just a little bit. So let's control S and it's centered pretty much perfectly. Uh, I want to move the text over to the left a bit too. So shift left, left control S and now I we have cut off our W a little bit. So I'll take my GIF. I'll go to the crop properties and I'll crop it on the right. Just the hair. All right. So there it is. A really cool looking um, Snapchat overlay. Now I'm going to go and bring this live stream up um, inside of. I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and file save as. And we're going to save this inside of a live streams uh, projects, assets, live streams. I'm going to save this as, let's say, um, webinar, webinars and podcasts. So I can open this up later and replace some of the contents in there. Would you like to delete all the sources? This, so this document contains sources that are not referenced by any shots. All those videos and images I imported that I deleted aren't in here anymore. Like the uh, life cam. I'm just going to click yes to get rid of those shots that we don't have any in here anymore uh, to kind of lower the file size. But now there we have it. I can bring in my webcam. 
Um, all of this is in real time. I can bring in a video. Um, I can bring in my overlays and turn off my logo. So I'm going to uh, make sure my logo is turned off. And here's our first, the first live stream overlay we created was this one. The second one we created, which is the one that we're going to start with is broadcast starting soon. Um, the second live stream thing that we created was presented by. All right. And then we go back to our webcam. with our logo we might bring in this shot and then we're going to build that back out after we feel like it's been on the screen long enough and while you can't really see the overlay too well of that like that black gradient that we added i'm going to go in here and set it to 100 percent so that you can see that it, it does exist or maybe like uh 71 percent. i'm going to save it and you'll see it kind of show up there now so if we have a video playing it has a little bit of a black gradient behind it so i can hide it show it and it has that little black gradient in the background and then I'll bring it back to my desktop. So when I bring in something like um, Google Chrome, you kind of see that black gradient back there. I don't like how big it is, so I can go in here and change it a little bit. I'm gonna adjust the size. That's cool, kind of like that right there. Save it. And it just a little bit, maybe change the transparency down, save it. That's much, much better. That's much more. Um, it's not like too in your face. It's not overwhelming. And I might even adjust my Snapchat icon a little bit so that it can be proportionate. And I'm going to save it which means I need to move my video up now. So we have this video here. I'll go and turn off my, or move my video layer up so that I can click on it and hold shift and up arrow to reposition it exactly where I want it to be and then bring it back down underneath my Snapchat icon. And now it's exactly where I want it to be. So when I do my live stream, which I'm going to go ahead and pull up a live stream now and go through all of these different shots so that you guys can see how it all works um, and, you know, how everything looks. It looks like I have a little bit of a white line on top of this. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't, but I can. If I set this background canvas to black and zoom in, um, everything looks good. Actually, it's fine. Uh, but, you know, I see a little bit of a white line. I might go in there and try to just aesthetically make sure everything is pixel perfect. But there's that. Now I can close all of these. I save them as a fireworks PNG, which means if I close Snapchat and don't save it, if I close the logo, if I close my title two, my title three, I don't need to save it. And this, I can go back and open Snapchat and, oops, I need to open something else open Snapchat and I can still go in here and manipulate everything. So I can grab the background of that, the background of this, change the color of it if I wanted to. Everything is still clearly um, a vector graphic and can be edited however I want it to be edited, right? Because I saved it as a fireworks PNG. Now I'm gonna close all of that and I'm gonna go and broadcast this live stream over to my Facebook page. I'm gonna go click on the output settings and turn off the Facebook page and actually just live stream this to my Facebook profile. Um, so I've disabled the Facebook page, click OK. Now I'm going to click on record. I'm going to build out all of my shots except for my title and my video. I'm going to bring the title and the video over. I'm going to click on record and I'm going to click on live stream. Now I'm live on Facebook. 
I can see in real time what my CPU usage is, how many frames have been skipped, if any. And when someone actually decides to come into the stream, I'm going to be able to see an icon where it shows me how many people are watching the stream, how many people have um, liked or said wow or dis or um you know showed an angry face or whatever all those icons will show up up here and i can see how many comments are um being posted on the live stream in real time maybe that's going to show up i'm going to go ahead and cue in my logo all right so it so shows that i have six viewers i'm going to go ahead and cue in um the broadcast starting soon please stand by and cue out my logo And then I'm going to go ahead and cue in the presented by Corions, which of course I have the outro uh, transition of the broadcast starting soon set uh, disabled so that it doesn't fade. I have the uh, built in transition for the presented by set to instant so it doesn't fade. Now this text is going to just change from broadcast starting soon to presented by. So I'm going to build that in. Boom. It just changes presented by Corions. And now I'm going to go back over to, let's say my desktop. So I'm going to disable my video, disable, I'm going to enable the audio, the music that I want to play in the stream and make sure that, um, the title shot is disabled. I'm going to enable my desktop shot and enable my logo, right? So we can build in the logo desktop and the, um, audio but i want to go and change this logo transition in real time here to be from right to right and accelerate and decelerate so when i build this in my desktop is going to fade in and my logo is going to come in from the right all right so i can go in here and build in my phone show some awesome stuff with my phone All right, so this is iOS 11, by the way. I'm just kind of previewing a couple of things just to show you guys what it looks like on my screen. two people watching so I'm gonna go oh we love him in his joint
so I'm just messing around. Um, we got music playing on the background. So if you look in there, you can see my live stream. There's my awesome teeth down there in the bottom right hand corner. Check those out. Went to the dentist today. Um, but you know, this is Telestream Wirecast that I'm using to broadcast this. And I'm using Air Server to show my phone, which is what I have right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Then I'm going to go in here and show my awesome uh, promo. I'm going to bring that promo back out to my desktop. Might even actually open that phone back up and pull up the... Uh, camera again so let's see if I can open that back up All right, so I'm just going to have this video running, and then what I'll do is bring up this Snapchat thing. Boom. A lot of things being processed on my computer right now, uh, but that's pretty much what it looks like. I'm live right now, and when I want to push something over live, um, the preview shot shows what I want to bring into the live stream, and then the live shot shows what my audience sees. So if you go over to my live stream on my Facebook page, you're going to be able to see this stream. Nobody knows what's happening, but I'm going to go ahead and turn the music back on for this stream. All right, I'm just going to walk around with my camera, okay? Um, yeah, I'm just going to walk around with my camera. Let me turn it around this way. All right, that's that's much better. Slide.
Now, what I'm going to do is, now that I'm done like playing around with my camera, I uh, couldn't take my microphone with me, so I wasn't really saying much. But I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and, you know, maybe bring in another cool shot, maybe our interview or whatever video that I want to have right here, a different camera. Um, and then I'll cue out, I'll, I'll delete the audio or, or clear the audio layer by selecting a blank layer. I'm going to clear my microphone layer by selecting the blank layer where my desktop is. I'm going to clear the webcam layer and then I'm going to go ahead and add my ending shot. Uh, but before I do that, let's say I still have this layer on with the audio. I'm going to go ahead and clear this layer so that we can uh, cue, cue out the Snapchat uh, text. And then we'll go with our outro minus the music, minus the webcam, minus the desktop and the microphone. And of course, I might want it to roll on this first, which is our promo again. I'm going to let this run all the way to the end because I have this set to remove. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up, even though nothing's really going to be there yet. I know technically when this um, promo shot ends. So right before it starts to fade out, I'm going to go ahead and clear that layer and fade it out myself, right? Right before it clears out, I'm going to clear it out myself. So I'm going to let this run. I'm going to let the Memphis Entrepreneur Club promo run as well. Um, and right when it starts to fade out, I'm going to cue my ending broadcast concluded shot, which has music embedded into it. This promo has music embedded into it, which means I have this music, the uh, main feed audio or the stream audio uh, cleared already. So I want to make sure these shots are all cleared and we have our um, exiting broadcast concluded shot ready to go inside of our preview. Once we click this arrow, this preview is going to come over into our live audience shot. Click the arrow. Boom. Live, cool live stream broadcast concluded featuring Corey Owens. The audio, the music is playing inside of this live stream. And we can wait until the live stream concludes before we disable the, uh, or before we can wait for the music to kind of die down or to, for the end of the music to, to play out, um, which we will go in here and make sure that the music is set to be, let's see, music is set to be remove. We want to make sure the video is set to loop. All right, so the music music is going to automatically remove itself once it stops playing. Once the music removes itself, we can go and uh, click on the record icon and the live stream icon to basically turn the live stream off and to turn off the recording. Let's say the music concludes itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. It's going to look like the, the, the broadcast pause. They might have a skip in the actual video. Now I'm going to stop the live stream. Before I do that, though, I'm going to open up um, Facebook. And I'm going to go over to the live stream. I'm going to go Corey. There's our cool live stream. I'm going to click watch and I'm going to turn the music off. Move this over. And then I'm going to go and turn our live stream off. I'm going to make our video full screen. So our live stream is ended, but the, the actual live stream is a little bit behind. You'll see where it stops. Now it stops. Uh, I'm going to go back to this, click File, Save. And I can go in here and click the live stream button again to, I think I can click this now to continue the stream. So let's go back and bring up our video with this and no audio. I want to see if we can continue the stream in here. Cannot begin streaming to Facebook. This can occur if broadcasting has been stopped or is timed out. Let's try it again. All right, it looks like we can't continue it. But sometimes, if if Wirecast will, if Wirecast accidentally closes or crashes, sometimes we can open it up, and you'll see where it says where it says broadcast has been interrupted, sometimes you can start the stream back up after Wirecast crashes. So keep that in mind. Um, but I'm gonna go in here and file save and 
our live stream has ended. Now we can go back and watch the actual live stream or the recorded version of the stream. All right, so this is the beginning. I'm gonna turn the audio off. I'm gonna move up a little bit. So broadcast starting soon. Presented by, so I'm gonna move back just a bit. Broadcast starting soon. It's gonna go ahead and automatically change to presented by Corey Owens. I moved up a little bit too much. The video wasn't ready. Now here's where we brought in our phone and we were just playing around with the phone for a long time. It's our video. All right, so this is what I wanted to see come up. Boom, so we've got the, the um, GIF in the bottom left-hand corner that shows the Snapchat, like money coming out of the Snapchat's butt. We're on Snapchat, snap us at Memphis ENTRPRNR uh, with the video behind it. We've got a video behind our snap code uh, right now. This is at it's HD, but pretty soon it's gonna be set. You're gonna have the option to see this in 720p once the full video processes because we just did this live. Um, but I went and walked around, <laughs> did some weird stuff with my phone, walked around and just kind of played with my camera a little bit. Took some photos. And again, this is using the iPhone. So if you wanted to use a camera, I, I just walked around the apartment with my iPhone and and kind of recorded this live came back went to the desktop changed this around um showed our promo which has music i'll let it play out to the end broadcast concluded And it plays our outro music. Two, one, zero. And the live stream ends. And it starts over. All right, so there's our live stream. I'm actually gonna go and delete this from our Facebook page. Delete, delete post. And our dope ass live stream is still going. So we're gonna wait for this to delete. And I'm gonna go down to close Wirecast. I'm gonna open up our folder. We're gonna go over to the desktop and we're gonna find our live stream. So uh, let's find dope ass live stream, my live stream tutorial, double click. Now this is gonna be much higher quality. We're gonna open that with VLC always use this app to open mp4s and here is the live hd version of what we just recorded over to our facebook page but this is in full 720p and it looks way way better way better all right it looks higher much much higher quality we can go and upload this to youtube we can go and upload this to uh to, um vimeo or whatever other platform that we use for video and we have music playing in the background desktop blah 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 so this looks really good we can go back and kind of preview everything that we just did in our live stream to see what the quality looks like and we can kind of take notes on things to do in the future so one thing that i just did that i realized is i turned my phone around the other way so that the camera is kind of on the bottom that way we can have all of our uh image tools on the left hand side so that it's not conflicting with our snapchat icon over here right um, I walked around with my camera, it showed everything in pretty good, clear HD 1080p. Had a couple of skips, which is okay, because we're uh, using iOS 11.2, uh, 
um, which is a little bit unstable. So it's going to have a little bit of skips and and um, hiccups in the video when we're streaming this live uh, because it's a beta version of iOS. All right, if you ask me, this is pretty cool. This is really good quality. Everything is exactly as I wanted it to be. There it is. Now you just recorded a video live and save that video in real time in HD. Actually, I put that as 1080p. Um, I saved that video as 1080p 60 frames a second, which is why it looks so much better when I pull that up inside of VLC from the recorded file on my desktop. Guys, if you have any questions, if you have any uh, comments, if you have any uh, suggestions, if you need any resources or anything related to this video uh, that you want to ask me or discuss, comment on the uh, video below. Share this with someone who is looking to start doing live streaming. If you have in mind someone that you would like to do podcasts or webinars with, tag them, share this with them, send this to them. If you have a graphic designer that you want on your team when you do podcasts or webinars and live streams or whatever with from Wirecast, tag them, share this with them. Um, and you know, do me a favor, react to this video to let me know what you thought. Give me a comment on the one thing that you learned or that stood out to you the most. Um, there are a couple of other things that I can include in here, like how to add some custom transparent features where I have my phone on the screen and I have a actual graphic of an iPhone around it. The same thing with a laptop or something similar. Um, but basically if you, if your graphic designer knows what he's doing, how to edit those types of files and he gets a hold of this program, he will know how to figure it out. I hope I can always go in and add, um, individual, um, modules and lessons on how to do individual sections of live streaming like if you want to learn specifically about shot layer properties i can make out a whole course that has modules and lessons for each area to where it's easier for you to go through an entire course to learn how to do this how to create the files and the assets the images the videos from scratch the last thing that i wanted to show you guys was uh firefox now i just installed a new operating system or I just reinstall my operating system so I don't have Firefox. I'm going to go ahead and download it real quick. I just type in download Firefox. Uh, this may or may not be Firefox. That's definitely not. I'm going to go and click on the go to download button so that we don't download any uh, viruses or random stuff. I'm going to click on the download Firefox icon and it's going to download automatically. I'm going to click that and open it. Yes, install. And once I install Firefox, what I'll do is find the download helper extension. This is going to actually help you get some of those videos that I use in some of these live streaming um, videos or some of the assets that I use as far as like video backgrounds uh, for free. So you can go to different websites and find free stock videos that you can download. Sometimes I get the majority of my free stock assets from YouTube. Ouch. And other people's websites. If I find a video on the background of someone's website, I'm like, oh, I want that video. I'm going to save that video. I'll show you how to do that as well. So uh, let's see. Right click and search. Mozilla Firefox. I'm going to open that. Uh, import. Don't import anything. Next. 
um, always, I'm never perform, and I don't want to use this as my primary. Right click, and I'm going to pin this to my taskbar. And what I'll do is go to Google, and I'm going to search uh, download helper. And we're going to search for the download helper add ons for Firefox link. Click that. I'm going to click on this green button add to Firefox. It's going to verify. You click install, click OK. Now it has this little dot icon over here at the top right hand corner. I'm going to go over to youtube.com. And, you know, maybe search uh, HD. Um, stock footage. All right, this is just one way you can find some really cool images or videos. So uh, dark days, free HD stock footage, 16 seconds. Maybe I want something longer. Maybe this is cool. I can keep this, but let me go and click on this, turn the audio down. Make sure there's no text or anything overlaying it. I'm not a big fan of this. So let me click on this one. It's pretty interesting. Still not really feeling it. Uh, fast motion New York. Is this a video or nah? Cool time lapses. So I want to find something that doesn't have text at the beginning. If I do find something with text at the beginning and the end, I can just download the video. You see how it has this like overlay. We don't want to use this. So I'm going to go and find something really cool, maybe in 4K. So 4K beach time lapse. You need a website. No, I don't. All right. So this video is 20 minutes. This video I'm about to watch right here is two minutes and 55 seconds. And it doesn't look like it has any overlays. It has an intro, which is this 4K text. And that's pretty much it. So I like this. I can go and click on the uh, download helper extension icon. And I want to look for 1280x720 HD 720MP4 or the 1920-1080 HD, HD 1080MP4. If it doesn't say HD 1080 um, and if it does say something like ADP, you don't want to download anything that says ADP. At the most, you can find the 1280 by 720 is going to be the best option as long as it says MP4 and not ADP at the beginning. So just the dimensions, HD, MP4. We're going to click on this one and we're going to save this in a folder. I'm going to navigate over to my computer, uh, properties, stock, video, loops. And maybe I'm going to save this in MISC first since it has that intro. I don't want that intro. I'm going to save this as miscellaneous. And I'm just going to click save. Now we have a HD 10 or 720 video that we can use. Um, I'm going to import this video into something like Camtasia or Adobe Premiere and trim off the beginning. Let's see if there's anything at the end. And I'm going to trim off this end that says subscribe. I'm going to trim all of that off and save it as a new video and delete the original. Once I do that, I can go and close YouTube, close all tabs. And inside of my live stream, you know, let's say this is my stream. Let me close my, let me disable. Well, I'll go in here and add a video. So media file. Let's go to uh, video miscellaneous and 4K beach. I want to set this properties to 101 and now I can bring this in underneath my live stream so I can of course go in here and choose uh, things like let's see let's see let's see unleash my life just teach me how to reach that light don't blink it'll pass you by so. I think I'll but I wanted to make sure that we don't have any audio it appears that it appears that we now do so I'm gonna go in here and take so this and turn the audio down so watch me now and turn that audio off and sometimes I think in some programs you can choose where you want the video to start where you want the video to end I don't think we have those options here, maybe endpoint, outpoint. So um, I can go in here and change the endpoint. I don't know uh, if I can change this actually. Outpoint, outpoint 255. 
there we go so we can actually use this in real time to trim the intro and the outro i'm going to jump to the out point and trim it back all right so there we go i'm going to push this over and it should automatically fade out or or loop at my out point and end point for me so now i'm going to disable my overlay and i'm going to go and select this video and set it to uh delete the uh disable the remember position so we can see if this starts from the beginning there it goes it starts exactly from where we want it to be so i'm going to go back and re-enable that option um, but there's our background. That's our video that we just downloaded. We didn't have to use a video editor to trim it. We can just go and use the trim points inside of our uh, preview shot to trim those videos that we download for free from YouTube. Of course, you want to make sure you turn the volume all the way down um, inside of the layer shot properties. You de uh, turn off the volume here and make sure the volume is set to zero. There you go. There is your free video asset. Um, if you have anything specific that you want me to uh, go over, I can do that in a separate video. I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions while I'm in the stream for those of you that watch this stream later after it's actually uh, finished recording. And definitely feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific questions that I haven't answered inside of the stream. So let's see. Live stream. Yo, okay, I was the third comment. So uh, Jerry says, I got to invest in Wirecast. Everybody needs to invest in Wirecast um, if they're trying to build their online presence for sure. And I'm going to pin Jerry's comments at the top. There you go. Well, thank you guys for watching. Share this with somebody who can take advantage of either the graphic design, the live streaming, or the podcast portion of creating webinars and live videos. Um, you can use this live streaming software to live stream videos over to YouTube as well um, and basically run videos that are pre recorded. Instead of uploading the videos directly to YouTube, you can get a better organic SEO ranking with those videos when you stream them up through your live stream into YouTube and upload them that way instead of just straight up uploading the videos you pre-recorded to YouTube. That's going to help because it'll be uploaded as a live video instead of a standard video. And um, that's a really good white hat SEO ranking because live streams just rank better. Now, obviously, people will know that the video wasn't live. That doesn't matter. Um, so long as it gets that organic engagement up front where people tune in while it's live and they think that you're doing some live stream, the fact that they tune in is going to make that video rank even better. Someone asked about this in Secret Entourage, the Academy group. And that was my response to live stream your videos directly through Wirecast to YouTube and upload them that way. And that's going to help you uh, get more organic reach and probably increase your uh, conversion rates. Well, while people are searching for different keywords in Google, some YouTube videos show up. So if you upload, upload your videos to YouTube using this strategy, your videos might be more likely to show up if you rank those videos with keywords in the title and the description. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream. Um, this is also a lesson that I'm adding into Memphis Entrepreneur Club as just an additional, like an extra bonus lesson. But I'm going to keep this up on Facebook um, forever. I'm not going to delete it. If you want me to do a stream about something specific to append to this, let me know. I'm going to go and create a course for live streaming with modules and lessons so that you can kind of learn each individual portion and basically complete a whole course and learn everything from scratch. That way it's more planned out. You don't have to pause or rewind the video. I'm also going to upload this to my YouTube channel. So find Memphis Entrepreneur Club on YouTube, subscribe to me, and it'll be easier for you to go back and watch one hour, two hour, two hour, 30 minute, three and four hour long videos um, on YouTube than it will for, be for you to watch them on Facebook as a replay because YouTube videos are just that much more optimized for long videos. Facebook is pretty optimized for live, but not for replaying the live videos. It's not easy unless you want to see the live comments and the engagements, but it'll be there. So definitely go and check it out when you guys get the opportunity to.